Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now is the time where we unbundle the day's newspapers and we basically make sense of the big issues in the news. It's called Off the Press. And with me today or with us in the studio is legal practitioner Liberos Ashoma. Thank you very much and good morning for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us. All right, we're kicking off with... Uh... Uh, you were going to say something? No, like, like they say, Happy New Week. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're kicking off with stories from the Nation newspapers this morning. Let's see what we can quickly find over there. Um, uh, breaking news from yesterday, of course, uh, spoke about the new Ohaneze uh, 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 president, uh, uh, Obiozo. So, I'm sure we'll get to talk about that. Uh, but here it says, Varsity workers begin three-day strike over allowances. It feels like... Uh, a strike every week in Nigeria uh, right now. Amotekun Mieti Allah in joint action against bandits. That's also one of the things you can find on the nation. How to grow economy in 2021. And also 37 travelers burnt in motor accidents. Um, more on the nation newspapers this morning. Gunmen kill three policemen in attack on a uh, police station. And uh, we also can find here COVID-19, the government to spend eight dollars on each vaccine for 144 million uh, we also can uh, see here uh, thugs attack senator and others at oshun apc meeting a laughing shifts uh, 50th anniversary that's one of the stories we can find and here uh, talking about the um a leader of uh, ohaneze governors leaders can vast unity at obiozo's election that's uh, from uh, stories from the southeast this morning so let's uh, move straight to Libra Sashoma and see which of them you can quickly pick off on. Yeah, um, please permit me to start with um, uh, Ohanese's uh, election um, because um, sometimes last week um, there were allegations that um, even though um, there was an election but that um, the outgoing leadership of Ohanese was trying to skew the election in favor of um, Obiozo and um, um, they were advised that they should try as much as they can to make the process uh, <coughs> transparent and not, and this is not the time that um, the Indigos, you know, would entertain any division amongst them, especially, you know, in the build up to the next general election that they've been clamoring for, uh, you know, the sh shifting of uh, the presidency to the Southeast. And so I was, um, I would also, you know, want to toe that line that no matter the um, fallout from this process that um, the um, Indigos should try as much as they can now to close ranks. Whatever the, the, the outcome, um, whatever the fallout, sorry, that this, they should, nobody should be, should be, it shouldn't be, nobody should be um, rejected or undermined you know, this should be a time for them to, you know, actually, you know, come together and and uh, f build a consensus and a common front that would help them, because um, I do not expect, you know, um, against the backdrop of the, you know, the division that we're experiencing now, you, they shouldn't expect that, you know, everybody consensually or unanimously will just say yes. that um, they should have you know, the, the, the presidency. And so it should come from them building a consensus first. And then quickly also um, on the issue of um, Amoteku, um, Meatiala, joint action against the bandit. I think also this should call for um, synergy, you know, not just in the Southwest, everywhere across the divide. Because a situation where I had said it, you know, in time past, that where you keep hearing, oh, um, headsmen, headsmen, headsmen crisis, it's not a crisis or headsmen invasion of communities. And then um, for an average headsman who is concerned about the bad publicity, they should sit down to take steps to actually say, how do we cope this? Because people, you know, um, are giving us a bad name. It's almost as if now, if you're driving on the road and you see cows, yes. it's almost as if, ah, look, you know, you are, uh, every headsman now is presumed to be, you know, 
uh, a bandit. Armed and dangerous. And then also, it's also, even though to some extent, the Fulanis have succeeded in removing that toga of Fulani headsmen, but they also should not forget that a lot of people still see all of them as the same. So they should also, you know, make, um, uh, take steps to ensure that they join hands with these communities and they call, you know, some of the genuine headsmen together to form, you know, such synergies to ensure that, you know, you, you, you are able to curb this crisis or insecurity, you know, whatever name they want to call it. Okay. Um, I think you can also briefly just speak on the government spending $8 each on the COVID-19 vaccine um, and our hopes of vaccinating as many Nigerians as possible. Um, how likely is that uh, we can achieve that? Um, this uh, uh, COVID and the vaccine, it's um, for a long time will be a crisis, not just in Nigeria, but world over, because there are still so many people who do not believe genuinely that um, you know this is a crisis, a natural occurrence. Even in the West, some people still believe that it was created, created to maybe depopulate certain areas, but unfortunately, it didn't work out the way it was planned. And all of a sudden, you have a vaccine for it. Also, there are conspirators, conspiracy theories that believe that the vaccine, you know, initially they linked COVID-19 to 5G. 5G yes. And then when that didn't fly, also they are linking... Um, uh, I Gates, speak I specifically of Pastor Chris Oyakilome, um, uh, who I don't know how to label that um, clip now. He said he saw, uh, he stumbled on a document and all of this, and was all of this are about um, money making and marketing and, you know, trying to control a one world. And so it's going to be a crisis for a long time. So that's why, for me, government should be careful in their spending and how they manage the vaccines. This morning also on... Um, on CNN, there was uh, also questions related to whether people can be compelled legally. You know, there are no laws in place yet to compel people to compulsorily to vaccine. vaccinate. Yes. You know, so yeah, all of these are going to be crisis, you know, um, a few weeks, months from now. But whether we have the capacity or the financial muscle to vaccinate everybody is another thing. And I think what the government is trying to do to create that confidence to so say, yes, the president had taken it, the vice president and some ministers. Another question you would ask, you know, we are, we are, a, we are doubters in this part of the world. People who are, are going to say, ah, are we sure that it is the vaccine that they were actually taking on air? I wish you know? water. So, so, that's why, <laughs> so that's why we need to be careful, especially, you know, with corruption always hovering around everything that we do. You know, we should try as much as we can to be transparent in spending. You're spending a dollar each on uh, vaccine. Eight, eight dollars. Uh, eight dollars each, sorry, on vaccine for 144 million, you know, uh, people. Um, and then the question you would ask, and, uh, you know, let's be more transparent in even the, the numbers. Because some people have asked, yes, you see a few persons that say, yes, they contracted the virus, but... You know, every day you hear the numbers increase and then government action, like I said last week, government action, you know, and inaction also does not actually, you know, tally with what they are saying. And then now the numbers are increasing. Yes. Government is um, destroying the uh, ad hoc uh, structures they put in place. So where are the people? Where are they actually treating these persons? Where are they conducting these tests? You know, how rapid, how, how much of these tests are we conducting? Um, to also tally with the numbers that we have. So all of these are going to cast doubt in the spending mm -hmm. if government is not careful. Okay. Let's, uh, let's now turn to the Punch newspaper. The big story here says it's unsafe to reopen universities now. COVID-19 guidelines absent, and that's us who's speaking. It says students shouldn't return to crowded hostels, classes, declare lecturers. Holding fiscal lectures now would be disastrous, says Funab Asu. We won't expose our members to health hazards, and that's Unical lecturers. Another big one here on the Punch newspaper is about the election of Obiozo. It says contestants kick as Obiozo emerges Ohanese Indigbo president. Electoral Amendment Act won't guarantee free polls, and that's according to INEC. Oil nears 56,000 FG 
$56 a barrel. FG may reintroduce fuel subsidy. And uh, while well, uh, we got uh, great news about Elon Musk now being the richest, uh, billionaires list Dangote losing $900 million in 24 hours. And here, down at the Punch newspaper, we see Akira Dolu restates call for state police over insecurity. Aggrieved APC members attack or shoot senator, vandalize vehicles. COVID-19, AKT imposes curfew, restricts gatherings to 20. And a few more stories here on the Punch newspaper and SARS. 2.5 billion naira lost to 95-day Lekki toll gate closure. Lagos impounds 100 motorcycles on restricted routes. And Versity workers plan three-day protest over IPPIS and 40 billion naira sharing. Ms. Alshama, these are the stories on the front page of the Punch this morning. And... Uh, would you be interested in speaking on this issue of reopening of universities January 18th that the federal government has prescribed and how ASU is now saying they don't think it's the right time or that the guidelines are not right at the moment? ASU should be ashamed of themselves, really. Um, for almost a year, they were at home. Uh, thanks to IPPIS or no IPPIS. And, you know, now, I, I, and nobody thought about the comfort or the the lacuna or the unaccounted for months that the student has stayed at home you know if you remember um if you, there are some jobs you apply for you know you are asked to state from you know um in your resume you must account for every year yeah you, there even was, the there years was that you were not in, yes. Yes. yes even the years that you were not in the university what were you doing you know, in other societies, you have opportunities for, you know, internship, um, internship or you have, um, you know, um, manual labor. So it becomes easy for you to go work in some, you know, restaurants, you know, do security jobs. But in this part of the world, it is not like that. And so you have the tendency for some persons to go into crime and then others will just loaf around and others will just be there. You know, so now I think, and then the university environment ought to be a hub for research, lectures, research, and building of character. But here, we just think that our university is an environment where you just come, sell, and out, and then, you know. So I had expected that as we were speaking, our universities should be churning out research on COVID on uh, possible vaccines and why should we or must we wait for the vaccine to come from the west why can't it come from here what are universities doing to ensure or find you know local solutions to this yesterday i was discussing um, with somebody about um uh, what do you call it um, 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 um usage of internet access and the rest why is it that now, with, with, um, we would have Zoom, we would have Skype, but with COVID, you know, Zoom became very popular. What are our universities doing to improve on what is on ground in terms of internet facilities and, you know, to ensure that, okay, even if students are going to come back to school, if we, you know, with what we have now, we have physical distancing, um, social distancing is encouraged. How do we, you know, latch onto this? to create, you know, yeah. apps. And maybe even will... build some, uh, you know, for the school. And then funding. This also brings us back to funding yeah, so of you, the university. So would you agree with them if they say um, we can't achieve these things due to lack of funding? That's where I'm coming to now. Um, sometimes also some of these students, university, assess funds through donor agencies. Yeah. So we also cannot just, you know, put the responsibility squarely on government, how about these a a areas where you can access donor funds from you know, foreign bodies? What are we doing to access those funds? And then secondly, the issue, this brings us back to the issue of funding. Anytime you hear the university go on strike, it is as a result of uh, salaries and allowances and not structures on, in the university. Here, you're talking about classroom, congested classrooms. So social distancing, uh, would, cannot, might not be observed. Even if you say let the lecturers 
do um, what you call virtual learning, how many of our public schools, how many of our public schools were able to conduct you know, distance learning while, during the lockdown? In most private schools. And then the private universities had been in session. What are they doing differently? You know, what have they, they been doing differently that they've been able to graduate students while the uh, public universities are home? So why is there no collaboration? You know, one learning from the other. Okay, you've done this thing. So it, with all of this, it's almost as if the university as, as well just created them. They just created excuses. They have not profiled solutions to the excuses that they created. One would have expected university should be a solution providing centers. So you say, oh, no, we can't do this now. So what are the alternatives? How many of the students actually have access to computers that if you now want to do virtual learning? What is the strength of the internet access in some of these areas? You know? So how do we ensure that you can even juggle classes and say, okay, instead of holding one class, if the group is large, let's have, let's stagger the classes. Or in the hostess, like what they did in, I don't want to mention them so that I don't seem to be advertising, what they did in some of the private universities, they staggered you know, sessions, yeah. you know, um, some batch will come, spend a month or two months and go. Another set will come, spend two months and go. So um, at every time, you do not have the entire students in school once. So that created opportunity for them to manage the facilities that they have. Why are our um, ASU not also, you know, looking in that direction? Oh, Must it be you? It, it creates, you know, a mindset of laziness. You don't want to work. Right? It's, so, it's, it's well, maybe laziness and lack of innovation. Uh, you know, and um, you know, there's numerous you know, th you know all, details. All, that, you know, that all, can be all, 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 uh, like they say, all join. <laughs> and then quickly, um, pa permit me to go to. I laughed when you talked about um, oil near fifty six dollars a barrel, yeah. and government may re they may reintroduce first subsidy. I've never seen a government as confused as this. They say there is no more fair subsidy, but you are paying bridging costs. You know, so there's equalization. So that is why the cost of PMS in Lagos is the same as the cost of PMS in Arugungu or Erumukokwane or in Anegbete. Because government is taking the burden of bridging. And yet, the cost of tomatoes in, in Bagada is not the same as the cost in Lagos Island or Lekki. So if there is no subsidy, that cost will not be uniform. So that means there is cost subsidy. Government is still paying something somehow. Yes. You know, and now, a government that says you, know, you want to allow market forces to determine price, all of a sudden you say, oh, there's more money now. So maybe we should reintroduce for a subsidy. It's something you have canvassed that it is not good for your economy. So that means if you have more money, you do not even know what to do with it. You need to, something you have condemned that you are throwing away money. You are just, um, you, are, you are subsidizing the rich. So that means if you have more money, you are going to subsidize the rich at the expense of the poor. So how then do you now intend or expect the people to believe you tomorrow when there is no money? When you now say, no, we need to yank up subsidy. It, it shows inconsistency. And then quickly, lastly, electoral amendment won't guarantee free pools. I completely agree. Uh, but that does not mean that we should not at every turn be amending to, to create opportunity for, to fine tune the process. But our attitude is what we guarantee free pools. But if you also amend and then um, you put structures in place that we streamline the interference, human interference, then you'll be pushing gradually to guaranteeing free pools. Okay, Let, let's just uh, have you take one story from The Guardian this morning. Uh, the major one there says, uh, late PIB passage threatens 4 trillion Naira marginal fields earnings. Federal government looks to, round, uh, looks to bid round to increase reserves. Host communities insist on right of uh, refusal. Also here, four soldiers injured as military kills 50 bandits, recovers livestock in Zamfara and Katsina. Um, 20 commuters, uh, commuters die in Bauchi auto crash and rancor and protest as Obiozo emerges new Ohaneze president. Uh, we also have here uh, the fire raises immigration service headquarters, Abuja market and Anambra fa factory. 
Um, I think, uh, let, just, just have you quickly speak on the number of bandits that are repeatedly killed, but it still doesn't seem to be taking away the situation, and the president promising that 2021 would be the end of insurgency in Nigeria. That's a promise that he's made even on, in, in March, in May 2015, upon inauguration, and a lot of people thought that um, you know, he was going to match his words with action. And at the end of the day, what we saw were just um, rehearsals and the real movie was um, it's just suspended. So I do not want such promises. All I want to see is let the people say that, yes, this government are truly, you know, taking steps. Let's say enough of all of these, you know, plenty words. I tell you now that be, for you to travel from Lagos to Benin, you need the blood of Jesus now, <laughs> seriously. And to travel from Benin through Auchi, Lokoja, Abuja, you know, you will need all the prayers, Imam and Christians to, you know, be on their guard for you to go and come back safely. And that's, these are the most, the two most popular roads in Nigeria. And yet they are unsafe to travel on. Airfare is, you know, beyond the reach of the ordinary man. And, and so you now begin to ask yourself, if in a country, your most populous roads are not safe, every day, there is no day you pick up a newspaper you will not hear of bandits, you will not hear of kidnappers. To the extent that kidnapping is now a normal thing. The government just hear of it and say, oh, you know, another has happened. Police would hear and they tell you, go and negotiate. When even Don't security worry. officials are being kidnapped. Exactly. So very soon, like I said last time, you will hear that a governor has been kidnapped. You know, so what we need to do, we are not doing yet. These people, they, they have domain. They are residents somewhere. They camp people. So when you come, you kidnap 15 persons. They are not in the air. You keep them somewhere. How come that we are not empowering our security operatives to survey these areas? We give them equipment to be able to assess these areas that the kidnappers trek to. See if cars cannot assess it. So it shows that we are just, um, a, a, we, are not, we, are, we are not serious. And then you now hear that governors who hit at all had condemned state policing. And now say, we need it. Anything that we can do to create a pool, to build more army of uh, uh, security personnel, we yeah. should do. This idea of, you know, uh, running Nigeria like a big local government where the president is the chairman and wants to decide what should happen everywhere can All no right. longer work. All right. We're out of time for this. Uh, thank you for... Uh, staying with us so far, it's been our newspaper review with Libros Oshoma. We're going to be taking a short break. When we come back, we'll be sharing with you what happened on this day in history, the 11th of January. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>